Is the shooter ready? Ready. Stand by and up. A carjacking occurs 50,000 times a year in America, and in three-fourths of carjackings, a weapon is used to commit the crime. Anymore, our criminals become more and more violent. Uh, an ambush, if you're not paying attention, is way too easy. At some point, you've got to decide, I'm making the choice to live through this situation. I'm not just going to lay down and give that choice to you. At the Fort Armour Rifle Club in Marietta, Ohio, tactical firearms instructor Ken Hackathorn is able to simulate scenarios that utilize difficult and unusual shots. It's a facility that allows all types and styles of shooting. We can put targets in a lot of ways. We can replicate real-life scenarios. Having to shoot out of a vehicle presents a unique challenge. What we're going to do now, folks, is show you a little bit about ways to defend yourself from a vehicle in case of a hijacking or an ambush. Dave's a, a tactical shooting instructor, and he's a commander for his sheriff's department, SRT. He's going to engage the target that comes into view primarily first. In this case, will be the one off to the right. Mind you, he's going to shoot through the passenger side window. Obviously, since we don't want to buy a new window for this rental car, we're going to put the window down. But in the real world, if the window's up, guess what? You're going to shoot through it. When you shoot through the glass, it's going to frost out on you. You're going to lose view of what you're doing. So it's always to your advantage to lean forward as much as you can, get the muzzle of that pistol close to the glass so you blow a big enough hole that you have a firing port so you can see what you're shooting at. As soon as he finishes that response, he's going to swing around and take this guy that's moving upon him from the driver's side. And remember, key thing, gun safety-wise, remember, we're always concerned with muzzle awareness and finger position. When you're moving the gun off target, your finger comes off the trigger to an index position, and when the gun comes back on target, that's when your finger goes back to the trigger. Let's watch how he does it. So taking account of who is around, the threat areas that somebody could be hidden in, somebody could ambush you from, is, is a critical skill. If you never see it coming, you're not going to be a player. All right, we're ready to go hot? Yes, sir. Shooter, stand by. And up. Good. Very well. Very well done. Recover. Okay, what we're going to do next is Dave's going to do another scenario here where he has to exit the car and utilize the car for cover. Scenario is he's faced with, again, an assault, a carjacking scenario. He's going to respond by quickly exiting the vehicle, utilizing it for cover and dealing with a threat as it comes to him. Okay, Dave, are you ready? ready. Shooter, stand by. Up. Good, very well done. What you saw here was Dave's application of two different techniques. Both work very well. Remember, gun handling's critical here. Remember those two magic rules, muzzle awareness, finger position. As you saw Dave move around, you'll notice he was very conscious of muzzle awareness, and his finger was always in the register position. Shooting was superb. Good job done, Dave. Thank you. The men and women of law enforcement train in all weather conditions, day or night. They do not know if or when they will have to draw their weapon while protecting our streets. In the field, you cannot actually pick what the conditions are going to be. Oh, this is close as we can get. The officers of the Plymouth, North Carolina Police Department are qualifying with Beretta sidearms. And for all levels of shooters, whether it be special forces units in Afghanistan, the police covering a beat on the streets to civilians at a local range, the fundamentals of shooting hold true. From this point on, the range is hot. Have at least six in your weapon, six in your spare. The officers are fine-tuning their existing skills and learning new tactics. We try to keep scenario-based events in mind. This type of training we're doing here is simulating real combat type conditions. Typically, bad guys are not going to stand still. The officers need to be looking for additional cover as they're moving, having to gauge targets at unknown distances. Using the barricades as cover, the officers kind of instill it in their minds that if they are away from a vehicle, away from a building, to try to find any type of cover that they can. Right back, safety on. Outstanding. What we're going to do now is start our combat course. Uh, the officers going to be seated in the car. We're going to exit the vehicle. Out here we have two targets, engage both of those twice. Obviously you've got limited exposure on one that's going to simulate the officer rolling up on a hot scene where 
maybe a gunfire is already taking place at that point we would decock for safety reasons on the range come out and we will move now to our second scenario in the combat course we will move forward and here using cover here we're simulating cover with these barrels come out get these targets make a reload if necessary come back up engage the last targets that are still there move to the third scenario which is transitioning from one weapon to another. It may be from handgun in this case to a long gun, or it could be we have an officer down and having to go from one gun to an officer down, long gun, whatever the case may be. So in this case, we would retrieve rounds, load, and then engage the last target twice downrange. All right, first up, same deal. Yeah. Majority of shootouts with law enforcement are low light situations. So it's very imperative that we do low light training. They have to apply the skills that they've learned, trigger control, sight alignment, and make sure that they make the shots. Accuracy is the ultimate goal. Functioning in a low light situation, you need to, uh, to focus on and be aware of your surroundings. Know where, where all your other officers are and, and where your suspects are. They can spend a lot of time dry firing to get that trigger control where they're not snatching, not jerking, and then coming to the range and actually taking their time and, and pressing the trigger, making sure they've got that trigger control and the hits are confirming what they did to dry fire. Press those triggers without moving the sight. First thing we're gonna do, whoever's standing here, punches out on the target, you set the little spent shell casing on top of the front sight, and then they have to press the trigger without the falling off. Do it repeatedly, then build that muscle memory up where you're not snatching the trigger. If they got out here and say, for instance, the rounds were down here and they were aiming here, then maybe they need to go back and do some more dry fire drills to keep that sight still when they press the round off. Soldiers deployed into combat areas are equipped with more firepower than police officers. But two fundamentals of shooting trigger control and using the sights are the same for all shooters, from civilians to the special forces. I'm Mary Vickers, nearly 21 years in special operations, including the Green Berets and a select special mission unit. I'm about ready to take a 100-yard shot with this Beretta Centurion in 9mm. Now I'm going to try it double action and see how I do, but what this really boils down to is confidence in your abilities of side alignment and trigger control. When you might do this is when you don't have a long gun available, you're only armed with a pistol, and you're trying to keep attackers at distance. If you see the three targets downrange, I'm aiming for the center target. Let's we'll see how it goes. Well, you saw it here, double action, first shot, nine millimeter Centurion. It can be done, trust me. When training with a weapon, we must always remember that we are preparing not just to protect our property, but to protect our lives. If we are jarring our pistols in defense of our life, it is a true decision-making process. Is my life in danger of death, great bodily harm, or serious sexual assault? Am I within my justified use of deadly force? A lot of stuff that has to be answered and the time frame that we have to answer those questions is from where? A man familiar with the moral and legal obligations when training with firearms is Dan Predovich. As an instructor, a certified firearms instructor, anymore my main goal is teaching instructors how to teach. According to the FBI, the amount of violent crime in states with right to carry laws is 26% lower compared to other states. Dan Predovich has trained thousands of civilians for their concealed carry permit. Good. This week, Dan is training with a woman who already knows how to defend herself. I'm Teresa Brown, third degree black belt in self-defense. No, no. All I do is give them an avenue to change the way that they feel about themselves, about their safety, about their defense. In situational awareness, and to avoid ever being a victim, you've got to prepare for the vast majority of situations. My job is to help them understand what they can do. The same feeling that I got being empowered after I left Dan's shooting range. At a private shooting range in Sedalia, Colorado, Dan is teaching Teresa the fundamentals of handling a firearm. These are the same basic instructions he teaches to any beginning student. The fundamentals of 
Marksmanship includes grip on the weapon, sight picture, trigger press, stance. Okay, Teresa, we'll work on the stance. Grip. We're going to start with the feet and work our way up. The one I prefer is the, the weak foot ahead of the strong foot and the weak toe pointed directly at the target. Feet are about shoulder width apart. Uh, knees are slightly bent. So why would you have the knees bent like that? It's easier to balance and also I have the ability to lean onto the front of my feet. So if I need to move quickly, I can move quickly. As a born athlete, Teresa naturally assumes a physical stance. The fundamentals of handgun shooting are best learned with a trained instructor. And many shooters of all skill levels have learned bad habits that can easily be fixed with proper instruction at a range. Teresa, this is the PX4 Storm made by Beretta. It's a single action, double action, semi-automatic pistol. That means that the first shot that you fire is a double action trigger pull and the second shot is single. If you hold the gun low like this, you aren't going to have a whole lot of control. You want to have your hand as high as possible to the axis of recoil. The axis of recoil is the barrel. Okay. I want you to take the gun. Now, if you have your thumb back here, what might happen is the slide might come back and cause a little problem with the web of your hand, so you want this hand over here like that. And the grip should be 40% right hand, 60% left hand. You want that bone to fit under that thumb. You want your thumbs both to point towards the target. Yep, just like that. You want to have an aggressive stance so that you're taking an aggressive stance towards the threat. Work on sight picture here. Uh, sight picture is the sight alignment. You have the front sight, which is that finger. The rear sight is that. You want to have an equal amount of light on the left and right side of the front sight. You want the corners of the front sight to be parallel to the rear sight. So I want to press the trigger carefully enough to where I do not disturb the sight alignment. It's the most important thing to stepping away from being an easy target is learning how to defend yourself. Teresa Byrne already has a black belt in the martial arts, but she is always willing to explore new avenues of self-defense. With her experience in martial arts, uh, she brings a lot to the table. Uh, she has very good reflexes. She has uh, excellent hand-eye coordination. Stance, correct? Very good. Okay. Your hammer is down. And that's good? Uh, that's good. The decocking lever is pointed towards the bullet flight. Which so you know it's ready, it's ready to, to shoot. And you're ready to fire. Extend out and carefully press the trigger. Excellent hit. Now single action. Fire again. Very good. Now decock and holster. I shot a gun. <laughs> well done. And I made the target. And nobody well, got hurt. <laughs> nobody got hurt. See, it wasn't that tough, was no. it? No. Okay. You ready to do it again? I am. Let's do it again. I saw a lot of translation between the martial arts and learning how to shoot a handgun in that it's something that you can learn once to be proficient at it. To be able to really use it, you've got to practice over and over. We can all learn from the experts in the military, police, and self-defense communities. Train to be prepared for the unthinkable, because lives depend on it.